Nice enough to join us right now. Uh, Kings assistant coach, Jay Triano. Coach, thank you so much for your time. Kyle Draper, uh, Whitey Gleason. Given full credit to Detroit, Coach, why do you think last night ended up being such a difficult matchup for the Kings? Well, I don't. I wish I knew. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> would have said would have said something wrong before. Um, I, you know, I think um, I think the first game back after a lengthy road trip and all the time zones that we changed, uh, it's you know, it's playing in our minds. Our sleep patterns are all. Um, but there's no excuse in it. You know, you got to find a way for those two hours of the game to uh, go out and be better than we were. We, we you know, obviously, I, I, it was one of the games where I, for. I don't know, just a handful of games so far this year. I didn't think our energy and effort was as uh, it was as good as it needed to be. And um, you know, they shoot fifty six percent from the field and fifty five percent from the three. And I think we were okay offensively, but we just had no resistance at the uh, at the defensive end, and it made for a long night for us. Coach Jay Triano joining us. Uh, Jay, you know, I, I'm a guy. I, I speak with my emotions. I wear my hearts on my sleeve. You know, losing, I hate it. I hate what happened last night. Uh, what's the vibe inside the organization, the locker room? What was it like last night where, you know, clearly Detroit shorthanded. I know it's the NBA. Anybody can beat anybody. Yeah. But is, is there yeah. a feeling that you let one get away last night? Absolutely. I mean, and I think it still hurts today. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we talked about it as a staff. We talked about it with the players after the game. And, you know, we – uh, we, we, we did, we let one get away there, but at, at the same time, you, 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 you mentioned it's right. It's the NBA and you know, they're going to play five guys. We're going to play five guys. It's not like they were playing five against four. Uh, their guys, their guys worked, uh, worked us and, uh, that's a credit to them. Um, but again, at the same time today, this is the NBA and it's like, Oh, we're going to draw on this. And the, Nope. You've got another game tomorrow. We got to start preparing for that game. Can we learn from our mistakes? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, that's what you hope happens, that we learn from this. And, you know, you think we had learned from losing the Charlotte game at home. Um, but we know we have to be better in, in this building. We've got great fans. We've got great support. And um, our defensive intensity and our defensive rating at home is uh, not, not even close to as good as it is when we play on the road. And that's why our road record is, is so good. Our home record could be a way, way better if we were uh, a lot more locked in at, 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 at the defensive end when we play at home and make it tough for teams to want to come in here. That's interesting. Yeah, Jay Triano with us, uh, Kings assistant coach. And again, coach, we appreciate your time very much, especially, you know, the day after a, a, a loss. It's uh, tough for everybody yeah. to swallow. What were the Kings doing best during the third quarter run? And why was that ultimately uh, unsustainable for you? Yeah, I think you know, you know, we we knew we were down, and we were like, okay, now we got to now we can turn it on. There's still a lot of game to play. Um, you know, we we had like four fast breaks in, in the in the third quarter that kind of got us up and down. We got some steals. I think it all, you know, the pace of the game leads to it. We made threes. Um, we had us down for 16 missed open shots, uh, so our our shots were not really falling. Even though you know we shot 34 percent on 44 threes. Um, you know, we think we can be better than that. We had open looks and we didn't make them. Um, I thought Davion came in and created some juice for us. Uh, I, the, the, you know, all night long, it seemed that we were scrambling for the, a, a lineup that could get us going. And we thought we had it going there in the third quarter. We started the same group in the fourth. And, you know, we, we went from up two to up four. And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, kind of maybe our, our, our legs gave out a little bit, but we hit that dry spell in the, or, you know, three minutes into the fourth quarter where uh, it became tough for us to score and tough for us to get stops. And it just seemed like we'd score or miss a couple free throws or anytime we did something, they'd come back and they'd hit a three. So it was just like, uh, you know, getting double buried on, on some of those possessions. Assistant coach Jay Triano joining the drive guys here, Sacktown sports, 1140 coach. Uh, we've seen teams come in. Orlando have a franchise record with threes. Detroit last night shooting close to 55%. I know you guys preach closing out and defending the three. It's such a big part. Why has the team struggled in that area, you think? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, we talk, you know, we drill every single day. Um, you know, we're not the longest team um, from the wing perspective to uh, challenge or, or to, to change a lot of shots. But we, we, we try, you know, if there's, a, if there's hot guys, we try to run them off, um, you know, in a um, I may be wrong on this, but it seems like it's some of the guys that aren't hot that come in here and have great day, great night shooting. 
Um, but, you know, you've got to be, a, you know, a very attentive to the game plan as far as who the shooters are, who we're going to run off. And, uh, frankly, some of them in, you know, in the Orlando game, we get caught trying to defend a certain player, you know, with a double team or a trap or a, a shift, and that leaves a three-point shot open. So, you know, we're, we're trying to take away rim points, and we're trying to take away the three, but you know, it just seems like teams come in here sometimes and they get it rolling on us. Coach, how surprising is it to lose by double digits in a game in which you took really good care of the ball and only turned it over four times? Yeah. Well, that's why, yeah, that's why I say it. Like, offensively, it uh, wasn't a bad game. Like, except, you know, except for the missed shots, and, you know, you score 120 points, you think that's enough. Uh, we were plus eight in the transition game. Um, you know, it's, we, we measure a thing called shot quality. Uh, we were, it was our sixth best shot quality game wow. of the season. Now, a shot efficiency wasn't quite up to, up there, and that's missing shots. But still, at the same time, when you, you would think 120 points is enough. And, mm. um, you know, unfortunately, last night it wasn't. And, you know, I, I wouldn't say we were as crisp as we'd like to be offensively either. You know, so I'm not, I'm not pinning it all on, uh, on mm-hmm. defense. Coach, uh, what can we do to get Keegan more uh, involved? He just hit, hit a little bit of a slump here the last week and a half or so. Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, we're all trying to figure out how to get him going. And, and you know, I think this is just part of his uh, being a young player, part of the journey, figuring out the league. We're, you know, we're up against the trade deadline, the all-star game, and all-star break is in, in view. Everybody's looking for a little bit of a break to get away. It's been 50-something games already, and, you know, I think I think the, getting staying getting and staying locked in is an NBA skill that young players still have to to figure out. And you know, Keegan, you know, I think he's been great for us. Um, I don't even know if he was that bad. He missed a couple shots, but uh, he seemed to get in foul trouble. That seemed to throw him off. And again, I think you know, adjusting to travel, adjusting to the NBA schedule, and learning how to play through all that is part of his growth process. Uh, Coach, we've been talking all year long, of course, about the ups and downs of the season. And Malik Mm -hmm. mentioned it last night. He talked about, you know, three steps forward, two steps back. To me, the number one reason, there's obviously a lot of reasons. The biggest reason is the team just has not been able to be as consistent defensively as you guys would like. Is that, do you agree, is that maybe the number one reason the consistency has not been there this year? Yeah, um, I think, I I think, you know, I, I think you could say that for the offensive end as well. Uh, you know, you mentioned Keegan, uh, HB, uh, hit a little bit of a spell there. He bounced back in the last, you know, five or six games. Um, I don't think, uh, Foxy's been quite the same as he was a year ago, as far as his ability to mm-hmm. close games and, and, and get in the paint and make something happen down the stretch. So, um, I don't know if you can, you know, blame it all on, on, on defense, but is it something we work on every single day and we try to, you know, preach about getting better at that, at that end of the floor, because, Realistically, when we are good defensively and with the speed that we have, we turn it. In, we, we try to turn it into points going the other way. And it seems when we're good defensively, we get the offense flowing pretty good as well. Assistant coach Jay Triano joining us here on the Drive Guys Sacktown Sports eleven forty. Coach uh, Whitey just talked about the roller coaster. Malik talked about it. I'm living it as well. How do you guys stay even keeled? I mean, you've been around for a while. How do you stay even keeled through these ups and downs? Well, I think, you know, we have a, this motto, and I've learned this a long time ago because, you know, I'm, I'm the same, you know, obviously. And last night was very emotional, and, it, and for me it still hurts today. But at the same time, um, there's another game tomorrow, and we've got a real good team coming in here. And the NBA is relentless as far as the number of games rolling in, and we've got four and six days here before the break. So we can't sit here and sulk and whine and complain about a loss against the Detroit Pistons. We've got a good, real good team coming in here. And, you know, for our, uh, you know, for our growth, we focus on the process, you know, one game at a time, one possession at a time and play that possession the best that we can. And hopefully that turns into uh, positive outcomes for us. Uh, we get caught up in outcomes a lot in this business and uh, business is, is about outcomes, but as a staff and as an organization, we focus on the day to day, uh, process and hopefully the outcomes take care of themselves. Coach, as we look at the roster and look at ways this team could be better the rest of the season, I look at Sasha and he, you know, he shows flashes and then he gets hurt. Is that fair to say there's a lot of room here still for him to kind of find a consistent role, stay healthy, start knocking down his shots? Is he a guy that could be a lot better the rest of the way than than what we've seen so far? Yeah, I think we've seen signs that you know Sasha can really 
uh, shoot the basketball yeah. and ex- you know create space for Fox and Sabonis out there and um, you know the injury kind of hurt him because I thought he was in a really good space uh, as far as starting to find that role um, and then you get out, out, you get injured and then you're out of rotation and then you got to find your way back and get healthy at the same time as finding your your spot so um, you know it's never easy for guys in, the, in that position. And uh, I thought he had fought himself out of, you know, being on the bench to being a little bit more of a player. And then all of a sudden you get hurt. But um, that's why, you know, this is such a team game and somebody else has to step up. Somebody else has to uh, take charge when you, when you run into those, uh, you know, situations. But uh, Sasha is definitely a guy that we need to be better in the second half here, for sure. Coach, looking at the schedule, obviously is difficult. Western Conference, uh, every game means so much. You got Denver coming in. Give me an early scouting report on them, and and how do you try to slow down uh, Jokic? Yeah, well, we've got them on a back to back, so um, they play tonight. So hopefully, um, that's 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 a good thing for us. They're, they're they're very sound, obviously offensively because they run so many things through him, and they've got Jamal Murray, who is a a great player. But they be you know defending champions. They've just got a great way about them. Uh, 12th ranked defense. They do a good job of taking away transition, which is kind of our forte. Um, it's going to be tough. I mean, we know who we're up against and, you know, it's going to be, you know, one of those uh, games where, you know, technically and tactically they look really good, but this is one of those games where we, we better have a lot of fire because of the way our last performance uh, played out. And uh, sometimes you can make up for a lot of things, just the way we saw the Pistons come in here shorthanded and, you know, a game where they weren't supposed to do very well. Uh, they came in here and outwork us. So we have to outwork them, number one. Number two, we have to find ways to move the ball from one side to the other. If he's going to play a lot of minutes, let's make him move. Let's tire him out and maybe become less effective at the offensive end. Best of luck on the trip, Coach. Thank you again, and we hope to talk to you soon. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you All very right, much. Coach. Yeah, there you go. Jay Triano, we'll um... – We'll discuss everything he had to say when we come back. Also, we'll look at last night and what exactly fans were booing when the Drive Guys return. Sacktown Sports.